Hey guys, let's talk about the watch market. Let's talk about asking for discounts and let's start off with some mistakes, maybe some regrets. I know a lot of watch enthusiasts before they really became watch enthusiasts and when they were just kind of normal people that liked watches and they walked into that authorized dealer and they had their eye on that tag Hoyer, a uh, Formula One quartz, whatever it was, you know, I'd insert any brand, a Movado or an Omega, or an Invicta, heaven forbid. <laughs> uh, but but you went in there as a person who just liked watches. You didn't know a lot. You weren't part of forums. You didn't go on Instagram and search out uh, you know, posts about this specific model. You didn't know the history of the different technologies that play within the movement, all of that stuff. You were just relatively a normal person wanting to buy a watch. You probably overpaid. You probably made several mistakes, maybe in the choice of watch that you purchased or how much you spent on that watch. And later on down the road, after you became educated, after you discovered Watch Recon, after you joined Watch You Seek or different Facebook groups, or you binge watch YouTube channels. Thank you if you, you know, watch me and subscribe to me. After you became a crazy watch enthusiast who was educated and you go, wow, I made a mistake. I wish I didn't have, you know, spent this much on that Invicta or that Tag Heuer or whatever it was. I think a lot of us have been in that situation. And some of you are fortunate to have found watch enthusiasts before you've pulled the trigger or potentially made a mistake and you're in that information gathering phase. I know I've talked to several of you that watch me. You reach out and say, hey, Bruce, I'm looking to buy my first luxury watch. How much of a discount should I realistically expect on a Breitling or a Grand Seiko or a Tudor? And I think, I don't know, I, I kind of struggle with this because the watch market is very fluid. And unfortunately, at this moment, we are seeing a lot of inflation. We're seeing market volatility. We're seeing interest rates rising. We're seeing bad unemployment. We're seeing not an ideal time for a lot of us to be into this expensive and totally luxurious hobby. You know, watches are non-essential items. <laughs> they don't matter when you're in crisis, when real things are happening, when you're experiencing real problems in life. I mean, watches are the farthest thing from your mind. I recognize that. And again, the watch, the watch market is very fluid. So you might be listening to this now, and six months from now, it's irrelevant, or it's much better, or it's much worse. <laughs> so we're going to talk about it today. Uh, and I'm going to give some suggestions that I hope those of you that are in that information gathering phase might find helpful. And so uh, let's just talk about uh, what I think is a no brainer. And that is if you're buying something that's hard to come by or that is very popular, I would not expect a discount. Or if I, if, you know, if you do manage to negotiate a discount, I wouldn't expect very much. And there is always some Yahoo in the comment section or in a, a forum or wherever, whatever platform you're on um, that goes, well, my, my cousin got 30% off of Breitling three years ago. So, uh, you know, you should never accept anything less than that. And they're spouting ignorant information that's not relevant to today's market. And so just be aware what somebody's cousin might have done on the internet three years ago is, is not something to base your decisions on. So that being said, again, if you're looking for a hot brand or a hot model, don't expect a discount. If you're being offered a Rolex at retail, don't even ask for a discount. You're not getting a discount on a stainless steel watch or a ladies day just or a full precious metal day date. These watches are selling the bottom uh, the bottom line is your authorized dealer or a reseller on the secondary market or the gray market. They know what these hot models are going for. They know how much uh, time it will likely sit in their store before it's sold at full retail price. Or again, in the case of the secondary market or the gray market, a lot more than, uh, than retail price. They know what they can sell it for. So if you come in and you go, well, I'll give you 20%. If you do it today, let's do the deal. You know, you, you read the art of the deal or you saw some negotiating on pawn stars and you're feeling, you know, you're feeling yourself. <laughs> it's not going to help you. 
So again, if you're shopping for a hard to get, you know, hard to get brand or a very popular model from a not hard to get brand, don't expect a discount and don't be offended if that authorized dealer or that reseller says, well, good luck with that. You know, yeah. Okay. Go uh, contact Joma shop. Go, have fun. You know, don't be offended if that happens. But here's a tip. If there is a model that has been sitting in the display case and it's been a while, maybe it's been a year and a half and you've noticed it as you've been coming and going and doing your business and maybe buying other watches and you've seen that model sit, those authorized dealers, they want to sell those models that are not moving. And so even if it's a brand they generally don't discount a higher amount on, they might be more apt to selling you that watch that's not moving at a more substantial discount. And so in that instance, I think you can be a little bit aggressive. And and here's a tip, don't, um, how do I say this? It's not acting, I don't, wanna, I don't wanna sound like I'm recommending that you play games, but if you come in and you go all eager, you're super excited, you're super interested in that watch, are they going to be incentivized to sell it to you at a very big discount? Probably not. But if you go, oh, well, let me check that watch out and you put it on. I like that. I wasn't planning on buying a watch today, but um, what, what do you say? 20% off. Could you do that? I think I'd buy it at 20% off. You could do something like that on a not popular model. <laughs> that's not super hard to come by. You might have more luck in that type of situation. But again, it's all predicated on your interest in that watch. Um, there's going to be fewer people that are interested in those watches that are sitting. Now, another thing I would recommend you doing and, and watching this video, I think helps to a small degree, but the big help is doing some research, doing some homework, get on eBay, search that model that you're looking for and look at completed listings and see what watches are actually being sold for within the past, you know, 30 days, 60 days, and then recognize that eBay price might be higher because that seller is accounting for eBay fees and other fees that are associated with selling on that platform. And so recognize maybe if I'm offering to a private party individual over watch you seek or a different sales forum, I can actually offer a lower amount because that person is not paying eBay fees. So you can do that type of uh, you know, type of negotiation, but the most important thing is that you're doing your research and you're you're noticing what watches are selling for, not what they're being listed as, but what they're selling for. Now, sticking with the eBay thing, I've seen this happen far too many times, and it makes me chuckle. But don't watch shop when you're tipsy. <laughs> I've got friends that have regretted making purchases because they weren't, they weren't, they were a little bit impaired. I'll just put it that way. And they bought, uh, they've bought two tone Omega watches. They've, they've bought black bays. They've bought, uh, watches that they probably wouldn't have bought otherwise. Uh, so don't watch shop when you don't have all your wits about you. That's another suggestion. You might, I don't know, you might be really surprised your insulting offer was accepted or, you might be going, oh shoot, I, I, how much did I spend on that? Like take my credit card away <laughs> type of situation. Now here's another suggestion for those of you that want to be the first owner of a watch. You don't want to buy a used watch. You don't want to get a better deal buying pre-owned or on the secondary market. You want to be the first person to put a scratch on that watch and wear it around. You have to stick with an AD. I would recommend shopping around to a few different ADs and getting a couple quotes from excuse me, different authorized dealers, but don't advertise the fact that you're shopping around. If you're trying to pit one authorized dealer against the other, that is something that is, that's no good. No authorized dealer likes that. Nobody cares if they offered you 10% and the other authorized dealer offered you 12% and you go back to the first one saying, well, they offered me 12 what can you do? You know, they're, they're going to go, yeah, just buy it from the other AD. I don't want to deal with this nickel and dimer. I'm not working at a flea market, you know? So, so don't do that, but shop around a little bit, see what different rates you could get from different authorized dealers. And in some instances, if you're buying out of state, they have that watch in stock. They're willing to ship it to you. You could save on sales tax. It depends on the laws of your state, 
but it would be a good idea to get a few different quotes from well-respected authorized dealers around the country. Uh, I have recommendations for ADs in, in multiple parts of the country, so you're welcome to email me if you're interested in specifics. But, but yeah, shop around a little bit, do your homework, recognize what watches are hot, what watches are being sold and what prices they're being sold for so you can make your offers, I guess, according. And you're not going to be taken for a ride. You're not going to have that watch regret down the line like a lot of us have had in this hobby. Uh, it's all part of the learning experience and it's a fun experience. I look back at my ridiculous Invicta days and I laugh at myself. Some of you might be in those days right now. And uh, I might laugh at you a little bit, but I totally get where you are because I was there at one point. And maybe you'll never get to where I'm at now, but a different watch enthusiast was where I'm at now. And now they're over there. Like it's, it's all relative. It's all in good fun. And I hope you get the discounts that you're looking for. And I'll leave you with one suggestion here. And that is patience. That is hard for us as watch enthusiasts very much. We're an impatient breed. We want quick shipping. We want good prices. We want this watch and that watch and that watch. Give me that free swag. You know, we're very impatient and sometimes that's to our detriment. Like we buy a watch, we like it. We're ready for the next watch. We got that itchy trigger finger and we're impatient about selling it. And then we sell it at a higher loss than if we were just patient in the first place. So be patient. It looks like Secondary market pricing is coming down with some Rolex models, some other models on the pre-owned market. Uh, if you're ready to go, yeah, do that negotiation, do that research, make those offers, do all of that fun stuff. But if you're not quite ready to pull the trigger yet, I'd say be patient, see what the market's going to do. Because six months from now, inflation could be a lot higher or uh, interest rates could be higher. There could be fewer people with discretionary income in the game. You never know. So uh, that's what I got for you guys today. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Put some suggestions for those of us that are just in that information gathering phase. We're starting out. We're trying to learn. Uh, please place your experiences, your tips, your suggestions in the comment section. Thank you for watching today. I appreciate it. And I'll catch you guys next time.